It is so good to be back at Williams. Or let me <laughs> phrase that another way. It's so good to be able to be back at Williams <laughs> since I sort of backed out on you the last time. Uh, I don't know what I missed during the children's music, but uh, it was entertaining at any rate. Uh, our scripture this morning is from the sixth chapter of Mark's gospel. Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they ask? What, what's, what's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. <laughs> Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his, uh, um, his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send out two by two, and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing with you for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. Why, I've known that kid since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. Who does he think he is? Have you ever heard somebody say something like that? If you've been around very long, you have. We chuckle about it, but we also know the person who said it was probably serious. I think that must be the kind of reception Jesus got in the synagogue at Nazareth. But before we explore that, let's look at one other matter in our text. We are told that when the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth. Obviously, Jesus considered the synagogue the place to be on the Sabbath. You know, he could have simply gathered his disciples together as he did on other occasions and begun to teach them. But he considered the fellowship of the people of God in the synagogue to be essential. I think we've drifted far away from that conviction. The church is too often the place to be if you have nothing else to do, if nothing else is going on. The church will always be there when we get ready to go back. I hope so, but I doubt it. We talk about following Jesus. Can we follow him in being faithful to God and to the worship of God? Or is he, in this case, a prophet without honor? I'm reminded of something out of my days in campus ministry. I would go out to visit a church or to preach there, and invariably, after the service, a dear lady would come up to me, and she'd say, if you're from Jacksonville, I know you know Johnny Brown or Susie Green. He or she is just the finest young person in our church. I know he's a blessing to your ministry. Now, the truth of the matter was that I didn't know Johnny or Susie. They had never darkened the door of my building. In fact, they had decided that when they got away from home, 
they'd leave this religion thing behind and explore the other side of things. <clears throat> but you can be sure when they went back home, they'd be sitting on the front row of the church or singing in the choir. At first, I would be embarrassed, and I would say, no, ma'am, I don't know him, but I'm sure I will. After a while, I would say, no, ma'am, he's never been to anything we do. The next time he's home, you tell him to look me up, and then let you know that he has. But you know, I always wondered where the students learn to be like that. Another thing is that I hear people say, I don't get anything out of the services in the church. I don't really feel welcome. Do you think that Jesus had a pretty strong hunch what would happen at the synagogue in Nazareth? But he went right on because it was important to be engaged in worship on the Sabbath with the people of God. Just what did happen? The scripture says that the people were amazed. Of course, since Jesus by that time had the status of a teacher, he was invited to teach in the synagogue on that Sabbath. Folks, I am sorry as I can be. I'm going to have to sit down over here and talk to you. what did happen the scripture says the people of God were amazed of course since Jesus by that time had the status of a teacher he was invited to teach in the synagogue on the Sabbath as they listened to him they were amazed at his wisdom how could a boy who grew up in a carpenter's home and was a carpenter himself have that kind of insight into the mind and the word of God Perhaps we forget, as they did, that God can use whomever he will for whatever purpose he chooses if they are open to being used. Not only were they amazed at Jesus' wisdom, but also at his miracle working. Evidently, word had come to them of the miracles he did as he was pursuing his peripatetic ministry God is still in the miracle working business and sometimes he works through people who cross our path. Not only, not always does God work the miracles we ask for, but whatever he does is miraculous. Jesus went right on teaching, but he recognized their lack of faith in whatever he was telling them. In fact, the scripture says he was amazed at their lack of faith. There they were, claiming to be God's chosen people, assembled to worship, being led by the most righteous of the righteous, and they lacked faith. Could it be that they were simply living by the rules, putting on a good front, appearing righteous? Didn't they know that always a man had been put to the right with God by faith? Do you suppose? Do you suppose that ever happens today? Or were they listening to the religious leaders who said to be right with God, they had to obey myriad laws? A most important statement is made in verse 5. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Those people were actually limiting the power or the action of God in their midst by their lack of faith. Do we wonder sometimes why we never feel the leadership or action of God in our lives? Do we wonder why God does not choose to serve Him in special ways? Could it possibly be that we are limiting Him by our own lack of faith? Our doubt that He can do what we ask or that we can do what He asks? It is ours to serenely surrender ourselves to God and expect Him to work as He will. 
The rest of the text is a contrast which reinforces some of these ideas. As soon as they could get out of that synagogue, and I imagine it was quicker than a bunch of Baptists leaving the church after the final amen, they went off, just Jesus and the disciples. We are told that he called the twelve together and empowered them to do his will. Then he divided them up into pairs and sent them out. There are two important principles here. First, remember that whatever Jesus asks us to do through His Holy Spirit, He will empower us to do through the same Spirit. There is an old saying that God does not call the prepared, He prepares the called. Never say you cannot do anything God asks you to do. The second principle, as I see it, is that principle of working together. Jesus did not ask the twelve to go out, each one of them alone. Rather, he divided them up in pairs. It is important as a Christian to have another Christian who can be your spiritual support. Each of us should have someone who supports and encourages us in our spiritual pilgrimage. Then, whatever happens, we will be able to see it two by two in the power of God. They had each other, and more importantly, they had Jesus to support them. Does that work? It is reported in the Scripture that these pairs drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. That's probably not our calling today but it was their calling for that day, and by their faith they were able to do these things. You know, they could have said, didn't Jesus see the reaction of the people in the synagogue? How does He expect us to do these things? But they didn't. They went expectantly on their way, waiting to see what God would do. In the same way Jesus has jobs for us to do, and by our faith, we shall also be able to accomplish them. Let us also wait expectantly to see what God will do. Since he was a prophet without honor to the people in the synagogue in Nazareth, they missed seeing the glory and power of God revealed. Their lack of faith even limited the action of God among them. But to those who trusted in his power and will, they got to see God's glory and power revealed among them. We have a choice. Is Jesus a prophet without honor to us? Or shall we know the blessing of being used by Him to make a difference in our church and our world? Let us pray. Great God, our Father, we thank you for the call to serve. And we would be those who by faith can do whatever you ask us to do. Be with us now and speak to us through Jesus our Lord. Amen.